Hello and welcome to the application number one walkthrough. Uh, I just wanted to give you a, a quick idea on how to do some of these problems so that, uh, you know, number one, we can kind of get our minds back into math and, uh, you know, just try to help you a little bit with some of these. And, and these are definitely some of the harder of the problems, but being a graded aspect of this class, I feel like it's worthwhile to... Uh, to talk about these a little bit more in depth. Um, when it comes to problems like these, and, and both of these are, are about the same level of difficulty, there's, there's some nuances that, that are happening in this one that maybe aren't happening in this one, but uh, one thing that I like to do when I go through a problem like this is I'm gonna group everything by its, vari by its uh, variables, yeah. So I'm gonna have five and six together. I have an x to the third in the first one. That's an ugly x, but that's an x to the fourth. y squared, y to the third, and then z to the third, and z. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call that z to the first just to help me out. Now I get to use all my rules, and this, this definitely helps me figure out this 5 times 6. Um, I would just be multiplying those together. In the second one, so that, that's as far as I'm going to go with the first one. You can figure out the rest of that on your own. Uh, the second one, one important thing that happens is the power rule. Let's, let's look at this part right here, this first sort of piece, to try to, uh, sorry, that's an A squared try to figure out a little bit closer what's going on. Uh, because there, there's a lot of times that I see students just call this 3a to the 6. Now, uh, you're partially right. Sadly, partially right doesn't really get you credit when it comes to math, and especially, you know, a, a class like this where I'm, I'm asking for these to be completely right. So we want to make sure that we've got a little bit better than a partial idea of what's going on here. Let's break this down and see what we have. I wouldn't recommend doing this for the whole problem, but we can do it on this uh, smaller piece of the problem without too much concern. I have three of these, three times a times a. And I'm not going to write in all the multiplication symbols, but okay. So I, I have three of those, and I'm going to simplify that. And I'm going to use exponents to simplify it. I'm not going to be multiplying even my threes together, which I could, uh, but I want to keep it with exponents right now just to see what happens. Um, but this, uh, how many threes do I have? And this, this is all multiplication, so I can just group things together if I want to. I have three threes, so, so this will be three to the third, and then six a's will be a to the sixth. So I have 3 to the third a to the sixth. So in a sense, we can think about taking this 3 and distributing it with the powers of the numbers that are given. Okay. So a 3, and, and remember we could see this 3 as being a 3 to the first power, becomes 3 to the 1 times 3, which is 3. And a squared to the third becomes a to the 2 times 3, which is 6. So... That being said, that kind of gives you an idea of how to do that. Um, and, and then the other important thing that I would kind of say uh, on this problem is do this problem in sort of two stages. We kind of did half of the first stage, half of the first stage. But do the numerator, and so simplify the numerator, then simplify the denominator, and then see what you get. Okay. Um, on the ones below, the uh, the area problems, uh, I don't know that they're, uh, you know, the biggest thing that we ought to know is that area of this rectangle will be base times height or length times width, whichever one you like to use. Uh, they mean the same thing in terms of a rectangle. Uh, for a triangle, we're going to have area equals one half base times height. 
same kind of idea. You have to know which one's your base and which one's your height. But I've only given you two, and it's all multiplication, so it shouldn't become too difficult, I don't think. Okay. And give numerical answers. I don't really know what I meant when I wrote that. Um, you can either have an answer for this one, like 5 to the something power, or you can have, you know, a, a, an answer, like uh, 1,000... 700, uh, 1,075, how about that? I don't think that's the answer. That's why I chose it. But you can either have just a, a numerical answer as in a value, or you can have an exponent answer. I think uh, I really was looking for this one. So if you'd prefer to do that, it's probably a little bit better, but uh, not, not overly required. I know the, uh, the biggest issue on this application page was definitely this uh, geometric probability. It is a harder section, but it's doable, and the way that it's written here is meant to help you out. The key here, the key to this whole thing is this statement right here, that I want you to use this formula. of error, The probability of something landing in the shaded region. So... I think about, I, I'm throwing darts at each one of these pictures, and I want to know if, if I'm just randomly throwing darts and all the darts have to hit, and like they all hit in this outer region, you know, with all these places that I could hit, um, what is the probability that it's going to land in the shaded region versus, uh, versus the entire region? So that's kind of what we're looking at here. Um, obviously, if the, the thing you should sort of uh, convince yourself of is if the entire thing was shaded, if we had this whole rectangle shaded, the probability would be 1. Okay? If the whole thing was shaded, we're guaranteed in that case that I throw a dart at this rectangle, What's the probability it lands in the shaded region? It's going to happen every single time. That's not the case in what we have, though. We only have a certain part of it shaded, so we want to look specifically to that. So to start off, I have all these different pieces to kind of help us out, um, help us get along the, along the lines of what we're looking for. The area, the area of the shaded region of this first one is just this 3 by 3 square. So you'd use base times height to figure out the, the shaded region there. The entire region is an 8 by 14 triangle. So 8 times 14 would give you that entire region. And then you want to go, whatever answer you get here, let's call it, uh, for lack of a better word, um, S. And then whatever you get here, E, for entire region, <coughs> Your, your answer, th this is like the answer of this problem. These two were, were sub-steps to try to help you out. Your answer is going to be S divided by E. And theoretically, in, the, in terms of probability, all of, our, all of our answers should end up between 0 and 1. Sorry, 0 and 1. Um, if you get something outside of that range, you might want to talk to me and try to see what you did wrong. Um, for more of a direct example, let's go ahead and work out this second one, because I know it's given a lot of people troubles because of the X's involved. Um, and then hopefully you can use that idea on, on the first one and the last one. So for this one, the area of the shaded region is this X by 2X square. And, sorry, not square, rectangle. An x by 2x rectangle, to find the area of it, just means I multiply those together. Well, what do I get when I multiply x by 2x? Well, I have an x to the first and an x to the first here. So I add those exponents, and I get 2x squared. <clears throat> For the area of the entire region, I have a 3x by 6x rectangle.
and 3x times 6x, 3 times 6 is 18. x times x is x squared. So my area, or my probability of landing in that shaded region, is going to be the area of the shaded, my 2x squared, divided by my 18x squared. And a cool thing happens, even though I've got variables in here, my division property of exponents tells me that this is going to be uh, kind of working off to the side. This is going to be x to the 2 minus 2. Well, 2 minus 2 is 0. And anything to the 0 power is going to be just 1. And in this case, we even... we. We can think even easier than that. I have an x squared on the top and on the bottom. Those x squareds cancel out. Same idea, or uh, two different theories as to why, but the same result happens. I get 2 over 18, or I can write that as 1 over 9, or I'd even let you write it as 0.11111 goes on forever. Okay, In probability terms, if you wanted to say a percentage, it would be about 11.1%. So use that to, uh, to figure out the other pieces. Uh, this one, I know it's kind of squished a little bit, but assume that that thing in the middle, the shaded region, is a circle. Uh, that will help you out a lot. I'm not going to talk about how to find the area of an ellipse. Um, so that's a circle. Treat it as such, and it should be okay. Other than that, have a good day, and we'll see you in class.